Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the owner and founder of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video and today I want to talk a little bit about how to actually self-love. So this is something I see so many people struggling with because, you know, people will come to me and say, you know, everyone's telling me I just have to learn to love myself, but how, what does that mean? You know, where do I start? And I think people sort of get confused because it's like, how do you wake up and, you know, tell yourself you're going to love yourself more and what you just wake up one day and say it and it magically happens. And the truth is that it's not that simple. So today I'm going to take you through some um, in-depth steps that will actually help you to learn how to set the, the circumstances up for yourself so that you can build a relationship to yourself and actually feel and experience self-love and make decisions out of that self-loving, self-honoring space. Um, now, I do want to remind you really quickly that we are launching a ton of really exciting courses. They're coming out at the end of the summer. Um, there's a ton of material. So, so we have a whole bunch of different courses that are specifically geared towards targeting areas of your life that you might be struggling with. And we've made these courses as affordable as possible, um, as in-depth as possible. They're like, the content's amazing, like next level. And you're going to have um, workbooks, worksheet summaries, cue cards you can put in your wallet, um, PowerPoint presentations presentations, all kinds of really, really supportive exercises, processes, self-discovery questionnaires, um, really in-depth stuff to help you create results-oriented transformation at the subconscious level. And this is where real change actually happens. So um, if you're interested in reserving your early bird price, 25% off, go to the Personal Development School website, www.personaldevelopmentschool.com, um, put in your email address, and um, just email, like right in the box under transformational course offerings from that list, which ones you want to reserve for early bird prices. And we'll make sure that you're on that list. And when we do launch, that's all synchronized for you. So, okay, let's go into the content for today. So first and foremost, um, in order to love yourself, you have to actually know yourself. And, and it sounds, you know, sort of straightforward, but I want you to imagine that you're, you can't love somebody in a relationship outside of yourself that you don't know. So I want you to imagine as you're thinking about how to learn to love yourself that you externalize the relationship to yourself as if it were a relationship to somebody else. So how do you connect to others? How do you fall in love with other people? Or how do you love and care deeply about other people around you? Well, you actually have to take steps and it takes consistent work in order to build a relationship so that you can have that love and that bond developed. And that is no different in the relationship to yourself. Okay, so number one, and, and this is how I'm going to sort of frame this content for today is I want you to imagine that when you're learning to love yourself, it's the same sort of experience as if you're learning to fall in love with somebody that you've just met. Okay. So think of a dating situation. What do you do? You take interest in a person and one of the first things you do is you learn about them. And without this piece, it's really hard to develop an actually deep bond with somebody. You really need to know somebody before you love them. And, and so this, it, this means, you know, as you're getting to know a person, you learn about their needs, you learn about their values, learn about their triggers, you learn about their dreams, their wishes, their goals, you know, their past and, and their beliefs and what makes them happy and what inspires them and what they don't like and, and what they really love. And, and um, you go through all of these things in this process of getting to know a person and it's through that vulnerability and that sharing and, and understanding and learning about a person that we actually build deep feelings. And the same goes with the relationship to yourself. So these are the things you have to start learning about yourself. And one really cool way of learning about ourselves as well, outside of asking ourselves um, the questions about those things I've just listed, is to, on paper, write down, like, what are my stories? Like, what are my beliefs, my thoughts about men, women, relationships, food, my body, myself, my ability to succeed, my parents, my siblings, money, like all these core areas of our life that we're exposed to day by day. If you don't know what your beliefs are and your programming is around those things, then you're still to a certain degree operating a large part of your life on autopilot. So, you know, take a belief inventory, like sit down with a pen and paper, 
deeper. Ask yourself all of those things. Deeply get to know yourself. And it's through this process that you're really creating the breeding grounds to naturally feel self-love, okay? Just like you don't intend to fall in love with a person. You learn about them. You know, you're dating them. You get to know them. You connect with them more and more, and it naturally happens. And the same goes with the relationship to yourself. So I'm going to just do a quick repeat of all of those things. So when you're learning about another person, you learn about their needs, you learn about their values, you learn about what triggers them, what their dreams are, what their goals are, their hopes, wishes for the future, what makes them happy, what inspires them, their likes, their dislikes. Um, and then again, really important to go through, okay, and what are my stories about men, women, um, body, food, relationships, um, ability to succeed, myself, parents, siblings, childhood, money, like go and just take a deep inventory of who you are and what you're holding on to in all of those areas. And it's through that process that you'll start to really get to know yourself. So that's a big step one. Step two, just like when you're dating somebody else, you, you connect to them consistently. You don't have one date, you know, once a month or once every three months and then fall in love with this person. There's an element of consistency required and the same goes to the self-loving relationship with you. And it means, you know, you have to have rituals or time carved out on a consistent basis um, to really get to know yourself. Otherwise, you sort of build this bond a little bit and then it goes away because you're, you know, super involved in your external environment and you're forgotten about. And can you imagine if, if that was somebody that you were dating, like you're dating them, you're getting to know them and then all of a sudden it's like you just go missing for two, three months, you stop connecting to them at all, and then you come back and expect things to pick up from where you left off, like that person's gonna be hurt, there's gonna be damage done to that relationship. And honestly, you'll notice this, like once you start connecting to yourself and carving out this time um, consistently, if you stop for a period of time, you'll actually feel sort of, not the repercussions, because it's not like a punishment thing, but you'll feel that disconnect and you'll feel out of balance and, and it can be kind of painful and funny. And so, you know, we want to nurture and nourish that connection to ourselves so that we have time carved out on that consistent basis. Number three, um, what else do you do with a person that you're dating? You, you take action. You have action steps and strategies that actually honor this person to a certain degree. So for example, um, you know, if this person has a dream or, or a desire or a goal to go do something, you know, if you're coming from this healthy space, you're probably going to support and encourage that person. And you have to do the same thing for the relationship to yourself. So, you know, you're not going to tell your partner who you've fallen in love with and you've been dating for a, a couple of years, oh, you know, don't worry about your dreams and goals. Just do what you're mom and dad want you to do. You would never say that to somebody. You'd be like, you know, <laughs> encouraging them to be in alignment with their truth. And you want to make sure you're not doing that to yourself either. If you're sitting and, and you have a dream or a desire, but you're like, oh no, you know, everybody's going to think it's silly or, you know, my mom and dad want me to be doing something else or my husband or wife want me to do it, you know, it, whatever it is, if you're doing that to yourself, again, you want to externalize that. What would that feel like if somebody else said that to you? Somebody else spoke to you like that? It would hurt. And if it hurts, you know that you're not moving in the direction of alignment. Okay? Um, number four. One, two, three. I think this is number four. Um, you want to create gestures. This is something else you do when you're dating somebody, right? You create gestures of love and care, okay? So maybe you give the person a massage or maybe you cook a nice meal for them or take them out to dinner or you do something that, that actually honors them. And these are things that you want to be doing in the relationship to yourself. Like what's your favorite restaurant? Take yourself to dinner or cook yourself a meal and intend to do something that's actually nourishing and healthy and supportive to oneself um, or, or you know go for a massage or go for some kind of appointment that honors you and your needs and this is something that doesn't have to be super super consistent but something that you want to be intentional and somewhat habitual in your lifestyle and again you're honoring yourself at the behavioral level okay so we've sort of touched on the belief level the thought level the consistency piece honoring yourself through action steps and strategies at the behavioral level um, and then lastly 
um, the last two sort of pieces in here is we make a commitment. When you're dating somebody, you're getting to know somebody, you make this commitment. And, and you know, we talked about the consistency piece, but the commitment is like, this is going to be something that I choose to do and choose to commit my energy and time to on an ongoing basis. And as cliche as this is, I find this to be so true in, in my practice and what I see with people and and you know, in relationships all over, is that to some degree we really do have to love ourselves in order to be capable of healthily loving somebody else. It's extremely important. And um, and so, you know, when we commit to somebody, we work to understand them, we work to make room for them in our lives, we work to make room for their needs and feelings, and we take those things into account, we try to hear and understand this person. And those are all healthy elements that are related to um, love. And so those are things that we all want to be able to do for ourselves. So making room for your needs, understanding yourself, hearing yourself, um, making room for your feelings, making room for, um, you know, habits and, and consistency in your life to show up for you. And so um, please take some time to carve out a little bit of time to go through all of this. Um, I even suggest writing down some of the things I said at the beginning in terms of getting to know the person in step one, all those pieces I listed off. Even go back there, rewind, write the stuff down, and then carve out some time, like every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, or something where there's consistency. You know, maybe you have an evening routine or a morning and evening routine every day if you can commit to it. But something that's feasible for you, and if it's something really new to you, then start small and just build a little bit of positive momentum. You sort of want to take action in small steps steps and, and allow that positive momentum and positive associations to build. And you'll actually see that as a result of doing this stuff consistently, that self-love bond really does um, build and unfold naturally. And it's a beautiful thing. And it, it definitely deeply impacts the health of all of the relationships outside of you. So I highly recommend doing this. I hope this video was helpful. Um, I will be offering a course on this in greater detail as well. And um, if you're interested in staying connected, please visit www.personaldevelopment school.com or feel free to shoot me an email at thais at personaldevelopmentschool.com. Thank you so much for watching.